So back on the Mark 7.5 GTI, um, I think last time you saw it, we were probably wrapping up stage two. Um, we did the upgraded downpipe and upgraded intercooler. And we also upgraded the high pressure fuel pump in this car. So now we're moving on to stage three, which is an IS38 from like a Golf R. And uh, we're gonna add MPI as well. That's what I'm working on today. Oh my God, I'm just playing with him now, yeah. Oh my God, what she's saying, say it loud, yeah. I can't respect it. I'm in a gym, but I am not flexing. Came from a Ford, I'm needing a Lexus. Shooting like Luca, I told him I'm next, shit. Oh my God, I'm just playing with him now, yeah. Oh my God, what she's saying, say it loud, yeah. I'm in a gym, but I am not flexing. Came from a Ford, I'm needing a Lexus. Shooting like Luca, I told him I'm next. Shit, I got a ball, I told him I'm here, I'm not waiting for y'all. They hit my phone, but I ignore the car. I got a drive, and I see that they star. I bought a whip, and I paid it in cash. Numbers keep growing, like what's on the dash? Drop me the Addy, I pull her the maps. Dressed in a white tee, I bought it a gap. Hitting the gas, he trailing behind. This in his games, but I stay on my grind. I told my fan that we all gonna be fine. Said I'm a star, that's why they all align. Said I don't rob it like all of these guys. I told them all like a million times. Waiting for me, but they know I arrived. What I'm doing to y'all, it should be a crime. I told them. Are you supposed to be dining in a blue car? It's done. What? Done. What's done? <laughs> Logs look great. It made 30 more horsepower. What more? I'm joking. Well, it's actually a really good starting point. Where we can make a little more, but yeah. It's uh, the way that we do our um I probably should turn the music off, right? Yeah. The way that we do with our patching, like we have uh, IAT temp correction and adding ignition timing based on IAT and the ethanol content, a lot of the tune self adjusts. So like right now, the log looked really good. Uh, boost control looked really good, surprisingly, considering it's set up for a stock turbo. A little tweak, it made 30, 35 horsepower at the very end, more. Um, very minor adjustment, I think, and we can roll on to MPI. Yes. Coffee. That's the reward. Isn't that right, Eddie? Coffee. Smells good. Doesn't smell bad. Okay, so the reason I'm pulling this out because you don't often see people talk about, oh, you need to service your EDF or pull the pump, check the screen. Uh, so our development car has 41,000 and change kilometers on it. Um, so this has never been out. And uh, honestly, I don't actually remember the interval change for these. But regardless, besides the point, the reason I wanted to check is I want to see if the screen was clogged, which we often see with the all-wheel drive cars, the how this pump screen is clogged with some like some goop, some clutch materials, and honestly, sometimes it looks like grease. Uh, so I wanted to pull this, check it, because what we had done earlier this week was install our EDIF upgraded spring um, so unlike the like the all drive cars where you can measure like data proven measurements of like you know we can do slow recordings see 60 foot times with a front wheel drive car there's a lot more variables and, and the way that the diff works is basically when you're cornering it, it's engaging the clutch pack right so it's very hard to quantify it's more about feeling as opposed to trying to find you know some way of quantifying that in, with like numbers you could do it with track times but again there's a lot of variables there i'm not a professional race car driver and this is not a race car per se so 
Uh, for one way to for me to verify that uh, this is going to be a viable product for us to sell is I want to check the pump screen right now, see if it's clear. Well, I'm going to drive this extensively, and I drive the cars hard because well, we do ECU tuning and TCU tuning as well. So I'm always driving them quite hard, and uh, I'll probably put 5,000 kilometers on this spirit driving and then we'll pull it back out and see if we have any excess wear like if we have a build up of clutch material or not um, to my knowledge no one's ever done anything for these so this is a bit of an unknown territory so it'll be a lot of testing we've opened it up for beta testers that are interested in this and are not afraid to perhaps wear some stuff out sooner than you know the kind of like OEM expectancy of their life. Um, so yeah, looks good. Obviously doesn't get used a lot, or didn't get used a lot in its life with the original owner of the car. Um, so we'll see what this looks like in 5000K and we'll report back. Nothing crazy. Did it do what you thought it was going to do yesterday? Um, yes. Thank you for the explanation. Thank you for coming to my TED I mean, sometimes the IS38s, if the if you buy a high mileage one, they struggle to hit one one point eight bar just because. You know, they've got mileage on them. Um, and the turbo control, there's a, there would be a lot of correction. But this one we found, it's not brand new, but it uh, was from a car that only had 20K on it, supposedly. But it doesn't really like running 1.8 bar, so. There's a few things that we can try, like the turbo inlet pipe it can be a restriction. Um, the actual intake in the intake pipe here is more than sufficient. It's usually just the knee, but there's good and bad because it can break the PCB system, as, as which has recently come to light by a data driven MQB. And I don't know where that socket is. What did I do with it yesterday? Alrighty, so it's been, I don't know, a few weeks um, since we were last filming with this car. So we installed the IS38 after we finished up with the stock turbo, the IS20. And uh, we were doing just IS38 uh, with the stock fuel system, push that as far as we can go. So we have the tunes for the facelift, Mark 7 GTIs. Uh, with that one, we made 370 foot-pounds of torque and uh, 354 uh, wheel horsepower. So super nice on uh, pump gas, 93 octane. Uh, so it'd be similar numbers for 91 because the fuel is so similar, um, at least up here. Um, so we, we did that, that was pretty simple, straightforward, didn't take too long. I think it was like one or two, three revisions. Uh, pulled the car back off, put the MPI kit on. Uh, so we used the 
980cc injectors, uh, Hellcat fuel pump, low pressure pump, and uh, CTS fuel rail. So basically it was just takeoffs from RS3, so we just reused what we had. Um, we did that and then we run into some issues with the fuel pump, which is a long story, kind of our own fault, but it is what it is. So that delayed things a little bit. Anyway, so we got that figured out and then we carried on. In the last two days, we just run through all of the MPI files. So doing pump gas and then uh, flex fuel. So we have on pump gas on MPI, basically the same numbers as what it would be with the stock fuel in. Um, the MPI will not really add any power. You're just octane limited. Um, so yeah, again, so it's like 370 foot pounds of torque. 353 to 54 wheel horsepower with MPI on pump gas, nothing crazy. Uh, and then I started adding ethanol, so started with an E40 blend, bearing in mind it's flex, so I can add whatever I want and it'll self adjust with our, the way that we do our stuff. So I started with E40 just to get a number. Um, and I don't have that up on the graph, but it was around about 10 horsepower lower than the E60 graph, which I do have up. Uh, so on E60, we made 402 foot-pounds of torque at the wheels and 374 horsepower. Um, on a few other runs, I did see as high as 380, but the, I'd just done a few runs, and the, today the weather's a little different, the car's a little cooler, um, or should I say the drivetrain's a little colder, so it just didn't didn't make as much power today because I only did a couple of rounds. So, but super happy with that. Got that figured out super quick. So, really good numbers. Um, one thing what I do want to show you is the comparison from the IS20 on E55, E60 um, with what this looks like on E60. And it's a, the spool is like very slightly different. like. The low end is really not effective, but up top there's a huge difference, and uh, it's a really nice power band. And comparing the IS20 to the IS38, I have the graphs up. So with the IS20, we had a peak uh, torque figure of about 403 uh, foot-pounds of torque and 340 horsepower. That this is on E50, our stage two flex fuel. Uh, with the IS38, we don't lose too much in the low end. It's obviously a little laggier, um, and peak torque is a little lower. Um, so we're, because conditions are different, um, but it's within the margin of error, we're talking like a difference of 10 foot-pounds. So the, with the IS38, we did 393 foot-pounds of torque at the wheels, and the peak horsepower is a nice jump. So that's 374 horsepower, big gain. Um, it really takes off around 4,500 RPM. The IS38 just keeps on, you know, trucking. It pulls up top really well. And it's a big difference around, you know, 6,000. Uh, you have a gain of about 60 horsepower at the wheels. So it, it really doesn't fall off. It's, it's a great turbo. It's very OEM plus um, and a nice upgrade. Super happy, gonna pull the car off. Uh, gonna do some drivability testing, just make sure everything is just you know, driving nice and smooth. That's what we like to do here. Um, we don't just don't do dyno runs, get peak figures and send the files out, it's not what we do. Uh, I'll be driving the car for a few weeks, so I don't know if this video will go out before the tune is released, but um, yeah, so keep your eyes peeled on the socials for when these go live. Um, next video we're probably gonna do will be Sam's car because his is a 2017 which still uses uh, CMOS 18.1 as opposed to the point tens on the very late models. So we'll have that done, so those guys will have uh, options for IS38 with and without MPI. How do I look? I, I cut my hair last night, I don't, know if, you, I don't nice. know if you could tell. Nice, yeah. it's very clean. Thanks. Yeah. Do it yourself? Always. Nice. <laughs>